In the previous lecture, uh, we discussed about the solution of the single degree of freedom system subjected to uh, ground excitation and uh, the single degree of freedom system uh, was taken such that uh, it goes uh, into an inelastic range. Uh, the problem was uh, that for a particular uh, time station, the displacement velocity acceleration of the single degree freedom system uh, was uh, were given and for subsequent time station, uh, we are supposed to find out the displacement velocity and uh, acceleration of the system. The time steps were chosen such that there was a transition point when it was passing from one state to the other and therefore, all the theoretical background that were discussed uh, when the state of the system moves from elastic to plastic, plastic to plastic and plastic to elastic. Uh, those uh, uh, state changes are explained with the help of that example. Now, we uh, take up the problem for a multi degree of freedom system. This is the frame uh, that is uh, considered and uh, in this particular frame, uh, we have uh, the different stiffnesses. For example, the bottom story has a stiffness of 1.5 k, the top story has a stiffness of 0.5 k and the uh, in between stories have a stiffness of k. The plastic uh, shear capacity of the columns uh, for the bottom column it is uh, VP3, for the top column it is VP1 and uh, VP2 and these are the elastoplastic behavior of uh, the column in shear. So, it is designated by a yield force in shear which is called VP1, VP2, VP3 etcetera and a yield displacement that is designated by XY1, XY2, XY3. The equation that uh, we had discussed uh, in the beginning that was written for a multi degree of freedom system uh, that is m x double m m delta x double dot plus c delta x dot plus k delta x is equal to minus m into delta x double dot g. So, in that the k is the k matrix, c is the c matrix and m is the m matrix. Now, depending upon the state of the system, the uh, stiffness of the members uh, are changed. Uh, the members which undergo yielding for those members do not contribute to the overall stiffness matrix of the system and uh, k is set to 0 for them and if the system is in the elastic or the member is in the elastic state, uh, then the full value of the stiffness that is k 1.5 k or 0.5 k uh, for the columns that were shown that are taken into consideration. Now, uh, in order to solve the problem, we require iteration as we have carried out in the case of single degree of freedom system. The solution for the multi degree of freedom system uh, is just an extension of the single degree of freedom system and uh, we have discussed how we developed the equation 6.11 that is k bar into delta x is equal to delta p using Neumar's beta method. Here k bar is a matrix instead of a simple uh, one quantity that was there for single degree of freedom system and delta p is also a vector, delta s is a vector. The k bar matrix uh, is given in equation 6.12a that is it is consisting of k t 
then C T and M. So, K T is the matrix which is uh, the transition matrix or the stiffness matrix at time t. C t similarly is a damping matrix and uh, A matrix is the mass matrix. In obtaining the K t matrix, we take care of uh, the yielding of the elements. If the elements, uh, if an element has yielded, then for that for construction of the KT matrix, we set K to be is equal to 0. Uh, similarly, delta P vector uh, that consists of minus M R double uh, delta uh, X double dot G, where R is the coefficient vector. And uh, this M is a matrix, it is again matrix. So, whatever equation we had in the case of a single degree of freedom system, they are M, C and K, they are replaced by the matrices M, C and K. Uh, rest of the definitions of other parameters remain the same. Now, we explain how we go ahead uh, for uh, the a problem which is shown in uh, the figure 6.5. So, this is the problem that we are trying to solve. It is a three story uh, frame having a stiffness of k by 2, k by 2, k by 2 for each column and the f y the yield shear for the column is f y and x y is the yield displacement, f y is given as 0.15 mg and where m is the mass of the system or this, this mass and uh, x y that is the yield displacement is 0 0.01475 meter. Now, for this uh, frame we are trying to uh, solve the problem at 3.54 uh, second uh, we have to find out the responses given those at a time at 3.52 seconds. Uh, the quantities uh, that are given is that f k that is at time 3.5 5 to second, the forces, shear forces in the columns are 1.44.9566.6433. So, this is for the bottom column, this is for the middle column, this is for the top column and all of them happens to be less than equal to the permissible yield uh, shear for the column. Uh, therefore, none of the columns has yielded. Uh, x dot is uh, given as uh, greater than 0. Uh, therefore, uh, the it is uh, in a uh, elastic state and it is uh, increasing in the elastic state. The k bar matrix uh, is given by this and um, finding out the value of k t since none of the columns has yielded. Therefore, one can construct the k matrix and this k matrix is given over here. Uh, it is not uh, very clear, but uh, this is the k matrix uh, which is computed and this is the m matrix which is uh, uh, computed and uh, the values of the displacement, velocity and acceleration at uh, the time uh, 3.52 seconds are given as this. Uh, now, with the help of uh, these values of the displacement, velocity and acceleration, uh, the k bar matrix is uh, determined using this equation and the k bar matrix turn out to be this. and uh, using these uh, the value of delta x double dot g as uh, 0.5913 and uh, the r matrix as the identity matrix that is a or a vector of 111 uh, one can calculate this quantity 
and uh, then knowing the values of x double dot k, x dot k and x k, the uh, values of delta p uh, is calculated as this one and once we get the value of delta p, then one can find out the displacement delta x as k bar inverse delta p and that turns out to be this. Now, from the displacement that is incremental displacement that is calculated uh, from that we find out the drift between the different floors and the drift is uh, given shown by delta x bar. The drift for the first floor is same as the displacement itself 0 0.00032. 0 the drift for the second floor will be the displacement of the second floor minus the displacement of the first floor. Similarly, the drift for the top floor will be the top displacement minus the displacement at the second floor. So, that gives us the drift and the drift multiplied by the k by 2 that is the stiffness of the column that gives the incremental force in each one of the columns. At, at kth time station f k the values uh, were given. So, to that values uh, delta f is uh, added to find out f k plus 1 that is uh, for the current time station and it is found that uh, the these value of the force shear force in the bottom column that exceeds the 0.15 mg that is the yield shear. Uh, therefore, the bottom column is yielding whereas, the other two columns that is the middle column and the top columns they remain in the elastic state. So, what is done is that we factor as before what we discussed in this for single degree freedom system factor the delta f in uh, such a fashion so that uh, the shear force in the bottom column that becomes equal to 0 0.15 mg. So, we multiply these uh, value of delta f by E 1 by a factor of E 1 then uh, a factor of E 2 for this and a factor of E 3 to the third column and uh, find out the values such that the yield shear remains less than equal to 0.15 mg. So, in that way we calculated the values of E 1, E 2 and E 3 since uh, it, uh, the column 2 and 3 or the second floor column one and the third uh, floor column they are in the elastic range therefore, E 2 and E 3 are is equal to 1. Uh, next what we do is that uh, once we know these values of E 1, E 2, E 3 which are the scaling factors for the drift that means, uh, drift is scaled. So, we wish to obtain now the uh, scaling factor for the displacement uh, so that the displacements that we have got that displacements are scaled such that uh, the yield shear in the bottom column becomes just equal to the uh, or the shear becomes equal to the yield shear for the first column. So, and that is what is called called the, the first part of the displacement vector or the scale displacement vector delta x e or what we calling as delta x 1. And this is uh, uh, written as that that is e 1 into delta x 1 that is for the uh, that is for the drift whatever scaling factor is for the drift uh, the same scaling factor used uh, for delta x 1 and for the second column it will be e 1 into delta x 1 plus e 2 into delta x 2 minus delta x 1 that is the drift multiplied by e 2. So, that is what we have done over here we know e 2. So, uh, similarly uh, we can find out the displacement for the top uh, floor that is e 1 delta x 1 plus e 2 into the drift 
plus E 3 into the drift that can be written as a revised scaling factor of E bar 1, E bar 2 and E bar 3 into delta x 1, delta x 2 and delta x 3. And these, uh, these can be worked out what are the values of delta x 1, delta x 2 and delta x 3 that uh, is uh, known to us because these quantities are known delta x 1, delta x 2 etcetera are known, E 1, E 2 etcetera are known. So, this entire vector can be calculated and that is equal to this, uh, this vector. And uh, once you know this vector from there one can find out the values of E bar 1, E bar 2 and E bar 3. So, these are the values of uh, the uh, scaling factors and uh, with the help of these scaling factors we get the value of the delta x 1 or the scaled uh, displacement. Now, next part is the once we have scaled the displacement to bring the uh, bottom column uh, forces within uh, or equal to the yield shear. Uh, then we obtain the next part of the displacement that is the plastic displacement part. So, this plastic displacement part delta x 2 that is calculated using a revised uh, stiffness matrix and the revised stiffness matrix is given over here. Uh, you can see that in place of 200 now it is 100 and this remains equal to uh, minus 100. So, the matrix is changed because of the yielding of the um, bottom column. So, you can see here the same thing in this figure that once the bottom column is uh, has yielded then uh, there will be no contribution or the k value uh, for that column would be equal to 0 and uh, the force to produce a unit displacement at the level of x 1 that will be equal to only k by 2 plus k by 2 from the bottom portion no contribution will come and k by 2 plus k by 2 is equal to k and that is equal to 100 and that is how we are getting over here uh, the value of 100. So, now the k t is revised from this k t we get uh, the value of k bar and uh, once we get the value of k bar uh, then we obtain k bar into delta x 2 is equal to the 1 minus e bar 1 e bar 2 e bar 3 into delta p uh, this e bar 1 e bar 2 and e bar 3 that we have obtained before that is the scaling factors. So, delta p vector is multiplied by these uh, scaling to get the value of delta p for which we will find out the plastic component of displacement that is delta x 2. So, once we get the value of uh, delta x 2 then the uh, we get the value of total displacement delta x, delta x is equal to delta x 1 plus delta x 2 uh, delta x 1 is the scaled uh, displacement and delta x 2 is the displacement which is the uh, coming uh, due to the plastification part or we call this as a plastic part of the displacement uh, this we call as the elastic part of the displacement. And uh, once we add them together uh, we get the total displacement delta x and vector and delta x vector uh, comes out to be uh, this. Now, with this delta x vector the x k plus 1 that is the displacement at the current time step uh, is obtained as s k plus delta x. Similarly, you know, one can find out delta x dot knowing the value of delta x and uh, from this delta x dot is computed uh, this way and once we obtain the value of delta x dot we can find out x dot k plus 1 that is the velocity at the current time station vector and uh, after we have obtained x dot 
x k plus 1 x dot k plus 1. Then we try to find out the total force vector at the current time station for that we get a delta f and uh, with the delta f once we get the value of delta f then we add delta f with f k to get the uh, values of the f k plus 1. Now, the f k plus 1 is the yield uh, shear the, the shear at uh, 3 flow levels and uh, for a particular column and we can see that the bottom column for that the, the shear is equal to the yield shear for the other two it remains less uh, than the yield share because they have not yielded. Uh, the two times this value is the total force. So, this f k plus 1 vector is two times this because you have got two sets of columns uh, in a particular floor. So, you, you use uh, the equation of motion at k plus 1 h station to find out the values of the acceleration vector. That is what we discussed uh, because if we uh, find out the acceleration by satisfying the equilibrium equation, then the error that is introduced into the calculation uh, that is compensated and as a result of that the uh, there is no growth of error as uh, the computation is carried over uh, the time steps. Uh, next we come to the bidirectional interaction. Uh, in the previous case uh, in the two dimensional frame we had uh, only uh, one directional yielding in the sense that in the direction of the earthquake the entire frame that is the plane frame was undergoing a bending and accordingly uh, there was a yield shear and uh, whenever the column reaches the yield shear it was assumed to be uh, yielding. Now, in the case of bidirectional interaction we consider uh, the two component earthquake or it could be a torsionally coupled system uh, in which uh, the columns uh, will develop uh, shear forces in uh, two direction that is x and y direction and uh, the yielding that takes place will be having an interaction uh, between the two shears that are developed in the column. For such cases uh, elements uh, undergo yielding depending upon the yield criteria that is used. So, whenever we have this kind of situation that is uh, yielding is due to more than one forces. Uh, then uh, we have an yield criteria and one can adopt uh, different uh, kinds of yield criteria. In the case of uh, bidirectional interaction of forces that is the uh, forces developed in the x and y directions of the column, if we consider the yielding then the, the two forces that are developed in the two directions they are basically uh, they are to be considered and uh, uh, it is seen that individually in each direction the column may not uh, reach the yield value, yet the section may yield because of the yield criteria that is assumed. Now, if the interaction is ignored, uh, then uh, the yielding in the two direction takes place independently that is whenever uh, the force in the x direction exceeds the yield shear in the x direction or whenever the force in the y direction of the column exceeds the yield shear in that direction then uh, we say that the columns have yielded. So, they take place independently, but whenever we consider the interaction effect then uh, the yielding uh, is uh, uh, considered based on certain yield criteria that is assumed.
In the incremental analysis, the interaction effect uh, is included uh, uh, in the uh, following uh, way uh, that is explained over here. Say uh, this is the this is a uh, frame in which you have got four columns. It is a one story frame. Uh, the center of mass is uh, at the center. The columns 1, 2, 3 and 4 they have varying uh, dimensions as a result of that center of resistance is such that there is a two way eccentricity E x and E y. Uh, the y and x directions are this. Now, the K e matrix that is the elastic stiffness matrix uh, for the system uh, can be written as K e x, K e y and k theta, k e x will be the sum of the stiffnesses of the columns in the x direction. Similarly, k e y will be the sum of the stiffnesses of the columns in the y direction and k theta will be equal to k e x i into e y plus k e y into e x summation for all the columns and that is how one can find out this uh, stiffness matrix. Uh, for uh, the entire system. The transient stiffness matrix K t which remains constant over uh, the uh, period delta t for which you are writing down the incremental equation of motion. So, that K t uh, transient stiffness matrix is written as K e minus K p that is the K p is the modification factor. Uh, this modification factor is coming into picture because of the yielding of any element uh, that can take place during the time marching uh, scheme. So, at any interval of time delta t or in the beginning of that uh, time interval delta t, the sum of the elements might have yielded and for that we should account for the effect into the stiffness matrix of the system and thus the k t matrix is uh, modified and the modification is uh, represented by this k p matrix. Now, the elements of the k p matrix uh, that can be ca calculated using this formula. These uh, formulas uh, are proved in uh, some of the papers and is available uh, in many of uh, the uh, papers dealing with the plastification of the three dimensional frame system in which bidirectional interaction comes into picture. Now, the k p x i and k p y i and k p x y i and k p y x i they are uh, given by uh, these uh, formulas where b x i and b y i are defined uh, uh, by this k e x i and k e y i multiplied by h i and h x i where h x i and h y i are related to v x i and v p x i in this particular form. So, knowing v x i v y y and the, the permissible yield shear for those columns if they are known then one can calculate h x y and h y i and uh, knowing the values of k e y and k e x y one can calculate b x i and b y i. And once we know that then k p x i and uh, uh, k p x, x y i etcetera can be found out where g basically i is given by this here again h x uh, i and h y i they are known k e x i and k e y i are known. So, at any given and state knowing the values of v x i and v y i one can calculate the components of the k p matrix and uh, uh, with the help of this k p matrix one can generate the k p matrix itself and uh, get the transient uh, stiffness matrix of the system at any 
instant of time t. Now, if any column happens to have gone into the plastic state satisfying the yield criteria, then uh, the for that particular element we consider k t to be equal to 0. Now, during uh, the incremental solution uh, the k t changes that is uh, for a particular uh, element uh, the stiffness changes as the elements pass from elastic to plastic, plastic to plastic or plastic to elastic the way we discussed uh, in the case of single degree of freedom system. When it is passing from elastic to plastic then there is a transition point and we should take care of uh, that transition uh, uh, point into the solution. So, that the displacement that takes place the incremental displacement that takes place consists of two parts. One is the scale displacement uh, we call that as the elastic displacement and the other displacement part in which uh, the k t becomes equal to 0 and uh, we get a, a plastic displacement. So, the scale displacement plus the plastic incremental displacement that becomes equal to the total displacement. When the, the system changes from P to P that it remains uh, in the plastic state itself, then uh, we check the yield condition that we will uh, describe shortly. And whenever the system goes from plastic to elastic state that means any element goes from a plastic state to elastic state then we uh, look into the plastic work done or the sign of the plastic work done from that we decide about the transition uh, point. The change follows uh, E p properties of the element and the yield criteria. So, the elastoplastic properties uh, must be given for all the elements and the yield criteria is uh, given by uh, many kinds of equation. Here uh, we take one of the very popular uh, yield equation which is given in this form V x i divided by V p x i. V x i is the uh, shear in the column in the x direction or for, the, or for the ith column and V p x i is the plastic col, uh, plastic yield of the ith column in the x direction or the uh, yield shear of the column in the x direction. Similarly, V y i and V p y i can be defined that is uh, the quantities in the y direction and uh, uh, the square of these two together is called phi i. Now, if uh, V p x i and V p y i are the same then the curve turns out to be uh, a circular curve. If V p x i is not equal to V p y i uh, then the curve is an ellipse. Phi i is equal to 1 that is when the sum of these uh, two quantities uh, become equal to 1 then uh, we say the plastic plastification has taken place or we say that it is uh, the column is in the plastic state phi i less than 1 shows the column is in the elastic state and phi i greater than 1 is inadmissible. And this is the check that we uh, do basically when the system moves from one plastic state to other plastic state that is uh, the for each column we uh, see examine or trace what is the values of phi i. And if the phi i happens to be uh, greater than 1 uh, when it is moving from one plastic state to the other plastic state then uh, that is inadmissible and in that case one has to pull down the forces. So, that is given the next step that is if phi i is greater than 1 the internal forces of the elements are pulled back to satisfy yield criteria. That means, we pull back uh, the forces so that phi i becomes equal to 1. So, as a result of that the equilibrium is disturbed the moment the forces are pulled back 
and this uh, the disturbance in the equilibrium is corrected uh, by an iteration technique that will be uh, described with the help of an example problem. The solution process otherwise is similar to that what we adopted for single degree of freedom system. At the beginning of the time we check the states of the elements and accordingly obtain the transient stiffness matrix. And once we can get the uh, transient stiffness matrix, then we can find out the solution for that and check the stresses in the elements and if it violates the yield condition at the end of the time or passes from elastic to plastic, then an iteration is utilized to correct the you know, state of the equation or to make sure that the yield condition is satisfied. Now, in the case uh, when the, the uh, any column passes from plastic to plastic state and if I i is computed as greater than 1, uh, then an average stiffness predictor corrector scheme is employed. And this scheme consists of finding out a tangent or the transient stiffness of the element and this transient stiffness is an average transient stiffness uh, consisting of the initial transient stiffness of the element that is at the beginning of the time step and k dash t is the tan tan uh, transient stiffness at the end of the time step. And uh, from this we work out an average and that average transient stiffness is used for that particular column. In order to find out this k dash t, what is done we uh, make some guess in the beginning and uh, with the help of that we find out a kta and with that kta we uh, go ahead with the solution and the solution gives a new value of uh, displacements or incremental displacements and from there one can calculate what is the revised value of the k uh, uh, dash t that is at the end of the increment what is the uh, value of the transient stiffness for that element. So, now that one is uh, used to calculate now kta and the process continues uh, like that till some convergence is achieved. So, this convergence uh, uh, is uh, examined for both the force uh, in the column and uh, the displacement in the uh, total displacement in the system. So, the incremental displacements or incremental forces that we get or that incremental displacement are, are examined in successive uh, iterations and uh, between two successive uh, values or the, uh, the difference between the two successive values if they remain within the some tolerance level then we say that the convergence has occurred. Now, once uh, the convergence is achieved then the forces are calculated in the columns again and the yield criteria for each one of the column is checked and uh, if it is found that uh, phi i is greater than 1 then the element forces are pulled back and uh, this pulling back is done by this equation that is the new force in the element that is f i dash is equal to the, the previous force f i divided by the square root of phi i and uh, the say phi i here will be greater than 1 obviously whenever it is greater than 1 it is not admissible. So, therefore, uh, we divide uh, the force by root over phi i uh, to get uh, a revised value of the force. Now, uh, with the new force uh, vector again we calculate uh, the kta is calculated and the iteration is uh, continued. For uh, the 
case when the column is passing from elastic state to plastic state, there is a transition point. Then uh, the it is a state forward extension of the uh, single degree of freedom to multi degree of freedom uh, system. That is, we scale the displacement in such a fashion so that the uh, the yield uh, condition is satisfied and uh, uh, the end total displacement consists of two parts one is the scale displacement other is the uh, plastic uh, part of the incremental displacement so we add these two to find out the total value of the delta x if one or more element are unloaded from plastic to elastic state then the plastic work increments for the elements are calculated and if uh, they are negative that means those elements are unloaded and the plastic increment or work increment is given by this equation that is F i uh, that is the force in the element multiplied by uh, incremental plastic displacement and incremental plastic displacement is obtained like this is equal to the total incremental displacement minus the the elastic part of the displacement that is kei it is uh, simply the elastic stiffness uh, matrix of the element into delta fi so that's how we calculate uh, delta uh, upi and uh, once we know that one can find out these uh, plastic work increment for that element if it happens to be a negative quantity then we say that the element has is unloaded and then uh, for the calculation over that interval of time uh, we consider uh, that element uh, to be an elastic element and uh, the stiffness uh, elastic stiffness of that element is considered in constructing the overall stiffness of the structure. The method is uh, explained uh, with the help of a three dimensional frame which is uh, shown uh, in this figure. The this is a three dimensional frame uh, having different columns with uh, different stiffnesses as a result of that we have an eccentricity both in the x and y direction the yield shear for the column a that is given as 152.05 newton and by knowing the yield shear in column a the yield shear for other columns uh, can be obtained from this particular condition that is the mpx mpy is equal to mp for column a is equal to m0 and uh, mpb and mpd they are equal that is equal to 1.5 m0 and mpc is twice m0 so since the moments uh, are in this proportion and uh, therefore the yield shares uh, also can be uh, obtained in that particular proportion so we know for all the uh, columns the yield shear and uh, once we know that then we go ahead with the calculation uh, that is uh, the values of ux uy and u theta uh, are given in the, uh, these uh, at k time station this is the velocity this is the acceleration uh, the fk that is the vx vy and v theta uh, is given that is at the center of mass the total shear in the x direction total shear in the y direction and the rotational uh, shear or rotational moment that is uh, given as this at the k time station the individual shears in different columns in the x and y directions are given like this and this is the incremental 
ground acceleration at a given for that particular uh, delta t. Now, the forces uh, in the columns uh, that are pulled back later, but uh, in the beginning we compute the value the uh, k e matrix and once we obtain the value of the k e matrix, uh, then using that k e matrix one can check find out the solution for the problem. And um, uh, we see that for each one of the uh, columns, uh, the phi value is less than equal to 1. Therefore, k t is simply is equal to k e that is the correction term k e minus k p that correction term k p does not come into picture. So, that is the initial state of the system. Now, for that initial state of the system, we compute the value of k bar and with the help of this k bar and delta p, we get the value of uh, delta u that is uh, delta u is equal to k bar inverse delta p and uh, we find out the value of delta f that is k t into delta u and we get the value of u k plus 1 that is uh, the or the next time step the values of the 3 displacement that is the 2 displacement in the x and y direction and the rotation. The f k plus 1 that we uh, obtain that is the total shear in the x and y direction and the rotational uh, force over here that you obtain at the end of the time step and the shear forces in each one of the columns are calculated they are shown over here and then we check for the yield condition by utilizing uh, this equation and we find that for column A, B, C and D for all the columns the uh, yield condition is violated that is it has become more than 1. So, therefore, the uh, forces are to be pulled back uh, so that the yield condition is satisfied. So, for that we calculate uh, the E A, E B, E D and E C as this one that is 1 by phi A a square root of that 1 by phi b square root of that and so on. And with the help of uh, these factors, uh, now uh, we go to uh, these um, values uh, that is um, the delta u e is uh, calculated and uh, the value of e bar is uh, calculated as a point 83 for all the columns where uh, e bar x is given by this then delta p2 is calculated that as 1 minus e bar into delta p so uh, we get the value of delta p then we calculate ex and dy for the new uh, state of stresses in the column. Then from there we get the values of h x i and h i h y i for each one of the column uh, because we know the revised value of the uh, shear and the and the yield shear and uh, from that ratio one can calculate these h values. Then one can calculate the values of b x i and b y i and once uh, they are uh, and then we calculate the g i value uh, for all the columns. And after you have obtained that then the components uh, of the k p matrix that is calculated using this formula and the components of the k p matrix are given over here and uh, uh, then the one calculates the k p x, k p y, k p theta 
uh, so that the modified tangent stiffness matrix that comes out to be is equal to kt is equal to ke minus kp we know all the elements of the kp matrix now and that's how we get the value of the kt matrix and once we get the value of kt matrix then from there we get the value of k bar and uh, using the value of k bar we can get delta u2 that is uh, the part of the displacement which is uh, the plastic component of the displacement and uh, from there we can find out delta u p x i and delta u p p y y for all the columns and find out finally the total displacement at uh, the center of mass uh, that is uh, by summing of the scaled displacement delta u 1 and the plastic displacement part uh, incremental displacement delta u 2 and delta v b p i for each one of the elements can be obtained and from this delta u p x i multiplied by the corresponding stiff, um, modified stiffness matrix in that the you can see that uh, the both k e and k p they are present the elements of k e and k p are present and finally using them we get the shear uh, values new shear values in the columns and once we get the new shear values of the columns then we apply this yield criteria and check whether uh, the, the yield condition is violated or not and for this particular problem it is found that um, once we make uh, this particular modification uh, then the uh, the phi value for columns a b c d they remain uh, more or less equal to 1 that is no further iteration is required. So, uh, what has been uh, done over here is that uh, in the beginning we have obtained uh, the values of the shear at uh, different columns and checked that uh, the, the columns were not yielded or uh, have not uh, have not yielded so uh, therefore every everything was in the elastic state so using now kt matrix uh, which does not have any kp component we obtained the value of uh, delta u that is the displacement at the center of mass and uh, added that uh, displacement with the displacement at the beginning of the time step uh, to find out uh, the total displacement and then we found out the uh, revised shear forces in each one of the columns in x and y directions. And then we checked the yield condition we found that the yield conditions were violated and therefore the forces in the columns were pulled back. Uh, so that uh, they uh, the ill uh, uh, condition is uh, satisfied that is phi becomes becomes equal to unity so with the help of that we found out a revised value of the displacement delta u1 and delta u2 that is the two components plastic component and elastic component of the displacements and finally get a, a revised value of delta u and that when we added with uh, the previous displacement we found that the yield conditions for each one of the columns uh, were satisfied therefore no further iteration was required. Mm -hmm.